because I was curious as to what weapons ISIS had to fight back. Barbara, do you know the answer to that? Well, Carol, by all accounts, they do have these artillery pieces. They have heavy weapons. Uh, the belief is it also that they may have some limited shoulder-fired anti-aircraft uh, missiles and rockets, uh, whether they could reach to the altitude that U.S. military warplanes would be flying at, I think is pretty doubtful at this point. Uh, what we know is two F-18s off the deck of the carrier George Bush out in the Persian Gulf uh, were patrolling over Iraq, came in, came in and had the mission to take out this ISIS artillery piece. As Rick Francona was just saying, it's a difficult target set to be able to isolate and know exactly what you're hitting. There's so many civilians in the area. But this artillery piece, they could identify. They knew that it was, they say that it was shelling uh, Kurdish personnel near where the U.S. personnel are. And that was the concern. That's the president's red line, protecting U.S. personnel, diplomatic and military in Erbil. I think it is very fair to say there are likely to be more of these so-called limited strikes because they have laid out two sort of rationales as of last night for doing them. Protecting the U.S. personnel in Erbil from the ISIS advance, but also potentially airstrikes against ISIS, which is advancing on those Iraqi minorities that are trapped up in that mountain area in northern Iraq. Uh, you know, where does it all end? I think the calculation now by the intelligence community is going to be how much firepower does ISIS really have? How do we get to their personnel? What do we do? What are the threats that they pose? All of these questions now being debated in Washington, a real possibility of more airstrikes to come, Carol.